This could be one of the most valuable DMZ videos you ever watch, if you're looking to improve, of course, and I'm going to assume you are. I'm going to show you and go through my whole thought process, my movement process, everything I did to take down this five man team that had a weapons case as a solo player. We're going to go deep into it, and I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure you drop a like, hit that subscribe button for more DMZ content. Let's jump right into it. So first off, I just got done gassing up my heli, and I saw this guy jump off with the weapons case. I know that I could get him with this heli. So I come down, I knock him right there. Pause. So right here, I had the opportunity to either just leave, and that was it, or... I chose I could choose to fight the team. I didn't know where any of them were. I knew there was one more below him because I saw him fly down with him. But I chose violence and I chose to fight. Let's continue. So I knew I needed to land my helicopter. So I jumped off onto this building and this guy right here. So this guy is, I don't know how he didn't get me. I got really lucky he had no plates on because I was able to take him out. And then it was on to three other players. And you can see the guy up in the top left there. He's also jumping onto me as well. So it's starting to get very intense. Let's play this out. So I knock him. And at this point, they are yelling comms, telling where I am blah 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 trying to get me down there's one more on the roof that i didn't know about and i had to take him out and this is where movement comes into play this is very important let's play this out i run around the edges here a little bit right there so i knew there was someone on the other side because i heard his teammate talking right so i knew that i had no health as you saw i literally you can see it right now I have a sliver of health. I am one bullet. So I knew that I had to outmove this guy and trick him into thinking I was going one way when I wasn't. And that's exactly what I did. Even he was surprised. And then he was pretty upset that I took him down as normal. So I took him down. Now I know that was the guy that got rezzed off the first down here. So this guy's trying to be friendly with me because he knows he's about to lose. And they have more teammates, three more. So. As I'm looking around trying to find these guys, if you guys see right here, out of the corner of my eye, on screen, I see this guy drop out of the sky. Now, a lot of people were complaining in the video that I have wall hacks and blah, 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 but it's plain as day that I literally saw him fall out of the sky right there. This guy was also saying, oh, now he's going to die talking, you know, talking smack because I didn't want to be friendly with them. But it kind of goes a different way. Let's run it. So I see that he's down here. I thought that was another player. I finished this guy off right there. Boom, done. So I know there's two left now because I know there's a five man squad as previously seen before. So now I'm just waiting. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, well, how did you know where he is? Where did, how did you know where his other teammates are? Well, anyone that's actually played on top of Embassy knows that the only way up to this point where I am is the ladder I'm constantly looking at. The only other way is through a door, but you have to go through Embassy, and they it didn't seem to me they had the Embassy key. So this is where the thought process comes into play, okay? I know that the only possible way their team is either going to jump from high rise or another high area, land on top of me, or they're going to come up the ladder and they already jumped off high rise. So there's no way that they're going to be coming from above me. So there's one way they're coming and it is up this ladder right here. So I know they got to come up this way to try to save their teammates. And lo and behold, there was one right here trying to climb up. I drop a couple whiffs just to prove that I'm not cheating. It was tactical whiffs. I promise I knock him with that grenade. And now I know that there's one more. I don't know if this guy is a self revive or not. So I kind of was trying to peek it and see if I could see him. The key here is, is I didn't want to give up high ground. I had this fight won already based on my high ground. They needed to get up to me, but
but there was no safe way to do so without me shooting at them first. So I looked around, waited. I noticed this guy right here. He's actually down. He didn't have a self, so I finished him off. Now, again, there was only one way up, and I heard the bot shooting down there by the way you go up to that ladder. So I knew that he had to be over there somewhere, and most likely, as I said, coming up the ladder to try to save his homies. So I come back over here and see, as you see all this stuff happening, here's the last guy right here, and I finish him. And then the whole squad is down. Within this process, I got called a cheater and blah, blah, blah. But I wanted to make the video to show you guys that outmaneuvering and outsmarting is much more important than any gun game you could bring into DMZ. DMZ is like a game of chess. That's how you need to treat it. It's tactical. This isn't about running around with your head cut off shooting. That's what those guys were doing. And look at where they ended up. I took down a I took down a five man team solo. Five man team. And they knew where I was. I didn't even the first element of surprise is super important as you're a solo player. I didn't even have that until I killed that first guy with the helicopter. But even then, they could have looked at their map and saw a red helicopter flying directly at them. The key here is, and I plan on making a three-part series to this. So make sure you drop a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see that. But the key here is is awareness, movement, and it those two things alone, there's a third one as well. We'll save it for that video. Is those are so important. I promise they will be much more useful than any gun game you will ever come across. That's how I win all of my fights. That's why people think I'm cheating. That's why, because Call of Duty players are not used to using tactic or strategy. They're used to playing an arcade shooter where they can just run around, shoot people left and right, and that's it, blah, blah, blah. But when you come in and you use your brain and you try to outsmart your teammates, it makes DMZ easier, but it also makes DMZ a lot funner because you're actually, there's so much tactic that goes into DMZ. If you guys ever come out to a stream, you'll see that <laughs> I try to talk through everything I do to help you guys understand. It's like this video. And I know these videos will help the right people. If you take what I'm giving you guys, the knowledge in this video, and you apply it, I promise you will become a better DMZ player. I promise. I It's not even a, a chance. I promise you'll get better if you apply this knowledge that I'm literally giving you for free. I promise. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have other ideas like this, let me know. We got that three-part series coming soon. I promise you guys will love that. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget to drop a like, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.